After a detailed analysis of Laplace equation and Poisson equation, now in boundary value problem, we are going to discuss a very important problem. Actually, this problem is discussion of wave equation. As you know, a wave is a disturbance which transports energy and uh, so you can say momentum from one region of a space to its another region. So whenever we consider a wave motion, definitely there is a transport of energy and if there will be a transport of energy, definitely there will be a transport of momentum. So this is the simple physical definition of wave. But uh, in physics and mathematics, we describe a wave by a function which is called wave function and also by a differential equation which is known as classical wave equation. In fact, this classical wave equation is in terms of the wave function describing a particular wave. So first of all, uh, before discussing the wave equation, I would like to uh, give some basic fundamentals regarding the wave equation. So first of all, let us see what is a wave, a wave function. In fact, uh, you know a wave function is a quantity which characterizes a wave. It means all properties of a wave is content in its wave function. In fact, uh, this wave function is in general a function of a space and time. When you say a space, it means a space coordinate that is x, y, z or position vector r and time t. So if you consider that uh, psi denotes the wave function of a wave, then if the wave is one dimensional, we say that the wave function psi is equal to psi of xt. Here x is the space coordinate and t is time. And similarly, if the wave is two dimensional, then we say that this wave function psi is a function of any two space coordinates and time. Let us say this psi is equal to psi of x, y and t. And uh, in general, in case of three-dimensional wave, this wave function psi is a function of the space coordinates x, y, z and the time coordinate t. You may also write in case of 3D wave psi equal to psi of rt where this position vector r denotes x, y, z because you know this position vector r is given as x i plus y j plus z k. So main point is that a wave function is definitely a function of a space coordinates x y z and time t. Now uh, in case of different types of wave, this wave function is different quantities characterizing that particular wave. For example, you can see if you be considered sound wave, that is a mechanical wave, in this condition, this psi of RT is equal to P of RT, where P denotes the excess pressure of the medium. Although sound has also displacement representation, but the pressure representation of sound wave is more appropriate. So you can say that in case of sound wave, excess pressure of the medium is taken as the wave function to describe a sound wave. Similarly, in case of uh, EM waves, that is electromagnetic waves, what does this wave function mean? In fact, in this case, the wave function psi of RT denotes either the electric field vector E or the magnetic field vector B or H. So in this case, you can write that this psi of RT is equal to E of RT, which is electric field vector, and B of RT, which is magnetic field vector. 
and uh, in quantum mechanics we always talk about matter waves proposed by de broglie so uh, in this uh, case of the in the case of matter wave what does this psi of rt means this is actually a very vivid subject we discuss it uh, more broadly and more extensively in quantum mechanics but here i am just writing a only one line about the wave function for matter waves actually in this case we denote the wave function simply by this symbol psi of rt and this psi of rt is an abstract quantity in quantum mechanics it when you say that psi of rt in case of matter wave that is wave function of matter wave is psi of rt actually this psi of rt is an abstract quantity and if you say that it is an abstract quantity it means it is not a measurable physical quantity like this excess pressure or the electric field vector or the magnetic field vector it means by any instrument by any device we cannot measure this psi of rt and uh, actually this psi of rt in quantum mechanics has probabilistic interpretation due to max bohr so uh, this is another subject matter we uh, we actually discuss it in quantum mechanics and definitely you can see my videos in quantum mechanics for the physical interpretation of this wave function psi of rt in quantum mechanics for matter waves now it is clear from this these examples if you see that in case of sound wave the excess pressure is uh, taken as the wave function and you know that this pressure is a scalar quantity but uh, at the same time in case of em waves the wave function is either electric field vector or magnetic field vector so you can see this wave function may be either a scalar quantity or a vector quantity and even it is it may be abstract or you may say that it may be a complex quantity in fact uh, as i have told you that uh, is that the wave function is a function of a space coordinates x y z and time t but uh, can you say that all functions of a space and time are definitely wave function the answer is no in fact uh, all functions of a space and time do not qualify to be a valid wave function in fact uh, a function of a space and time may be a wave function only when a particular differential equation is satisfied by by that very quantity and actually what is that differential equation which must be satisfied to be a valid wave function this equation is due to d lambert and this equation is known as the differential equation of wave motion or you simply you can say wave or the classical wave equation in fact you can see here i have mentioned that equation this equation is del square psi equal to 1 over v square del 2 psi by del t square here in fact this del square you know is laplacian or laplacian operator and in cartesian coordinate you define it as del 2 by del x square plus del 2 by del y square plus del 2 by del z square this is the meaning of this uh, laplacian in fact in cartesian coordinate actually in different coordinate system this laplacian has different uh, meaning or different expression we will discuss uh, the wave equation in different coordinate system 2 uh, in the forthcoming lecture and here this v is a constant and this is this v is actually known as phase velocity or wave velocity of the wave so you can say if psi is a wave function then definitely this equation defined in equation a must be satisfied by it so this equation a is known as wave equation in three dimension you may uh, write equivalently the one dimensional wave equation and the two dimensional wave equation and we will actually discuss all these three equations in separately in the forthcoming lecture so now i hope you it is clear to you that uh, 
psi of x, y, z, t can be a wave function only when this equation A, which is called classical wave equation, will be satisfied by it. So this equation is called wave equation. And you can see that this uh, wave equation is actually a partial differential equation of uh, second order. So definitely its solution will be in terms of method of variable of separation. But uh, our aim in this lecture is to derive this wave equation, not uh, to discuss its solution. In fact, in the forthcoming lecture, we will discuss the solution of wave equation in different coordinate system. But in this present lecture, I am just going to derive this classical wave equation. And for the deduction of this classical wave equation, you can see this figure. Uh, <coughs> for its deduction, let us consider that uh, a series of particles are lying along the x-axis. You can see this is x-axis and we consider that uh, there are uh, particles lying along this x-axis. It means we are just talking about the one-dimensional wave equation first and then we will re uh, uh, generalize the result uh, for the 2D wave, uh, 2D wave and the 3D wave. So for this, what I have said? I have said that we consider that a series of particles are lying, are uh, distributed on this x-axis. And uh, O is the origin, as you can see here. And we consider that the particle at this origin O acts as the source of disturbance and that disturbance actually travels in the positive x direction with a particular velocity let us say this particular velocity is v which is called wave velocity or phase velocity so let us now consider that the particle at the origin is disturbed at a particular time t equal to 0 and uh, when this particle at uh, x equal to 0 and y equal to also 0 is disturbed and it passes through the equilibrium position at this time t equal to 0. So in this condition, the displacement of the particle at any instant time, any instant t will depend only on time because here x is actually fixed at its value 0. So you can say that uh, the displacement of the particle will be a function of time t only. So what I have said? I have said that, let, that the particle at the origin O is disturbed and uh, at time t it passes through its equilibrium position which is actually O. When you say equilibrium position, it means uh, the position where no uh, resultant force acts on the particle. And at any time t, let us say that its uh, displacement is equal to psi. Displacement is equal to psi. So for your convenience, I am just writing this fact here. So let at t equal to 0 when the particle at t equal to 0, when the particle at O, O means origin, O passes passage its equilibrium position equilibrium position passage its equilibrium position then then displacement let us say psi, psi is the displacement of this particle 
displacement of this particle at any time t t is represented as represented as we denote this displacement psi of 0 t here in fact 0 represents the x coordinate which is 0 and this will be only a function of uh, t so we write it f of t so the particle which is disturbed at t equal to 0 and the disturbance travels along the x axis this particle actually passes through its equilibrium position O at t equal to 0 and at any time t the displacement of the particle is actually psi and this psi will depend only on t because x is here fixed and its fixed value is 0. So you can write psi of 0 t equal to f of so you can say that here this f of t is any function of time f is a function whose actual nature is not known till now now uh, the disturbance which we produce at t equal to 0 travels along the x axis and the, you can see this figure i have shown that this is actually the wave pulse which travels with a constant velocity v in x direction V will be constant only when the medium is actually isotropic and homogeneous. So this travels along a positive x-axis. And uh, this wave pulse actually reaches to a particular point P. You can see in undisturbed position this point P will be here. And uh, when the disturbance reaches at this point x equal to x which is P, then in this particle is uh, displaced and it is at this point p now you can say that uh, what will be the time taken by this disturbance to reach to this point p as you can see i have considered that the distance of this point p from the origin along x axis is equal to x and the pulse is traveling at a constant speed v so definitely time taken by this wave pulse to reach from point O to point P will be simply equal to x by v. So you can say that this wave pulse, this wave pulse will reach will reach a point will reach a point P at a distance X from O from O in time x over v when you say that the disturbance will reach to the point p at a time x over v it means the particle at p will be disturbed at a time x over v later than the particle at o so the disturbance which was actually produced at uh, t equal to 0 is now at point p at time x by v so if we consider the disturbance at x equal to 0 at time t then that disturbance will reach to the point p uh, after a time x by v so you can say thus the particle the particle at p 
will be disturbed disturbed x by v second later than the particle at o particle at o because the disturbance takes a time x by v to reach to this point so <coughs> this uh, the particle at p will be disturbed at a time later x by v than the particle at o so you can say that the displacement uh, psi of the particle at p at any instant t will be same as at x equal to 0 at a time t minus x by v so so you can say the displacement psi of the particle psi of the particle at p at any time t was produced at o at a time t minus x by v if you consider that uh, disturbance at any time t at point p definitely it has been produced at a time t minus x by v because uh, at o the disturbance is produced earlier and it takes a time x by v to reach the point p so if you consider that disturbance uh, is uh, at time disturbance at p uh, at time t then that disturbance was definitely produced at a time t minus x by v now if the medium is homogeneous the shape of the wave pulse will not change and so you can say that uh, the disturbance uh, uh, <coughs> suffer the same uh, displacement the sorry the particle will suffer the same displacement at uh, time t at position p which uh, uh, and uh, at t equal to t minus x by v and x equal to 0 so we can say that uh, therefore psi at uh, x equal to 0 x equal to 0 and t equal to t minus x by v this must be equal to psi of x t it means the displacement at the position x barabar 0 and time t equal to t minus x by v and the displacement at x equal to x and time t equal to t must be same because the shape of the wave pulse does not change now you can say that uh, this displacement psi of x t psi of x t will be equal to what this will be equal to psi of x equal to 0 and t equal to t minus x by v so in the light of this equation 1 you can uh, write what will be psi at x equal to 0 and t at uh, uh, t equal to t minus x by v so you can see that when x is 0 and t is t then we represent it by f of t so in this case in instead of t there is t minus x by v so we can write that this f psi of x t is equal to a function of t minus 
x by v t minus x by v actually this equation is uh, the wave equation which uh, and that wave actually travels along the positive x direction so you can say this is the equation this is the equation of a wave traveling along traveling along positive x direction positive x direction similarly if you want to write the wave equation for a wave which travels in negative x direction what you will do you can simply take v equal to minus v and when you will take v equal to minus v there will be plus here so you can directly write in the light of this equation to the wave equation for a wave which travels in negative x direction so you can say similarly equation of a wave equation of a wave traveling in negative x direction negative x direction is given by as i have told you you have to take v equal to minus v so in instead of minus sign in rhs of equation 2 there will be plus sign and so we can write psi of xt is equal to f of t plus x over v so this equation represents actually the wave which travels in negative x direction now the function f which we have used here actually determines the shape and size of the wave so f determines determines the shape and size of the wave we will see later on this fact now after getting the idea of the wave traveling in positive x direction and in negative x direction uh, <coughs> now we can obtain the differential equation uh, representing this wave so for this you may consider the wave either traveling in negative x direction or in positive x direction anyone so now let us consider the wave traveling in positive x direction and you have seen that for a wave traveling in positive x direction the wave equation in this case is represented as psi of x t equal to f of t minus x by v so you can see actually this function psi is a function of two independent variables one is a space coordinate x and another is time t so now uh, let us see that uh, this psi of x t is equal to a function of t minus x over v since psi is a function of two independent variables and uh, now let us find its a second order derivative with respect to the space coordinate x and time coordinate t since the, this function is a function of two independent variables so definitely we have to take the partial derivative so you can see from this result what will be del psi by del t 
you can see. When we will differentiate this uh, with respect to t, we will consider this x as a constant. Since f is an unknown function, so we will simply write it f prime of t minus x over v. f prime t minus x by v. And so uh, you can take the second order derivative del 2 psi by del t square and this will be simply f double prime t minus x over b you can see easily now we will find the second order partial derivative of this wave function psi with respect to x so you can see here what will be this del psi by del x you can easily see first of all we will differentiate it with respect to t minus x by v and that will be f prime t minus x over v and then we will differentiate this minus x over v with respect to x and you know the derivative of minus x over v is since constant so we will take this minus 1 over v as constant and uh, del x by del x will be 1. So this is simply minus 1 over v f prime t minus x over v. x over v. Now we will take the second order partial derivative. So this will be del 2 psi by del x square and you can uh, see again this will be 1 over v square f double prime t minus x over v. So you can see we have obtained del 2 psi by del t square here and del 2 psi by del t x square here. Now we will actually relate these two partial derivatives of psi. You can see uh, uh, combining uh, these two results what will be del 2 psi by del x square you can easily see here. So, so del 2 psi by del x square. You can see this is 1 over v square del 2 psi by del t square. Sorry, 1 over v square this much. This is f double prime t minus x by v. But here you can see this f double prime t minus x by v is simply equal to del 2 psi by del t square. So instead of this f double prime t minus x by v, you can put del 2 psi by del t square. So I write here, this is del 2 psi by del t square. This equation is nothing. This is simply the wave's uh, equation in differential form and we say that this is the classical wave equation for a one dimensional wave. So if we write this equation A, so equation A represents equation A represents the classical wave equation classical wave equation. Now you can extend uh, this uh, result uh, for the case of three dimensional wave. As you know in case of three dimensional wave psi is a function of not only of x and t but also of uh, y and z. So in case of 3D wave in case of 3D wave as you have seen earlier that this psi will be a function of 
x y z and t so you can write in this case del 2 psi by del x square plus del 2 psi by del y square plus del 2 psi by del z square and this will be equal to 1 over v square del 2 psi by del t square and you know the LHS of this equation may be written in terms of Laplacian operator del square and so equivalently we can write this del square size equal to 1 over v square del 2 psi by del t square and uh, as you have seen earlier this is the classical wave equation in case of 3D wave this is also known as the Alembertian equation so you can see we have derived the classical wave equation and as I have told you earlier that in this lecture our aim is only to derive this wave equation in fact in next lecture we will see the solution of these wave equations.